<laughs> how I feel about moving. Uh, this is amazing. <laughs> I feel as though that I, God been so good to me and my family. I just seem as though I shouldn't move. <laughs> for Margaret Jennings, Butler Place was home for 65 years. One of Fort Worth's oldest public housing projects, it opened in the 1940s for low-income residents of color. They used, used to call it the project. And I noticed uh, one of the managers, her name is Miss Holston, she used to tell me, don't say project, say public house. <laughs> Sometimes I still say the project. After more than 80 years, the red brick buildings are showing their age. Butler Place is closing, and housing officials are helping residents relocate to new homes throughout the city. Moving out means closing the door on a piece of Fort Worth history. In fact, the history of public housing in America. Many are thrilled to get a fresh start in new modern apartments. Oh my God. This is beautiful. Oh my God, look at this bathroom. Soak a tub. Oh, this is nice. Others, like Margaret Jennings, are more nostalgic. She raised three sons at Butler Place and remembers a strong sense of community there. We had a club, a neighborhood club, and uh, I was the vice president. And uh, a friend of mine, her name was Gladys Amerson, she was the president. And we was always trying to get things done for the neighbors. The club was trying to get things in here mm -hmm. for the kids. We need a washer We got a washer too. And uh, we got a lot of things done here in Butler. Like their mother, the Jennings brothers have fond memories of growing up in Butler Place. The memories that I have are mostly like the people, you know, I had a lot of friends. As far as activities, we had Pork Chop Hill. We run up and down. We had the grassy hills. We did slides on. And then we had basketball go down the street. And it's an area that we probably visit called the Free Show Hill. Free Show Hill. About where those trees are down there was where they erected this large screen like a movie screen. And what you could do is take what we call a pallet. And you take the pallet out, yeah, that means you get your uh, popcorn and your hot dogs and your food, and you take it to the free show hill, and you lay on the pallet, and they will show you movies till one o'clock in the morning. The atmosphere at that time here in Butler when I grew up is that, yes, you were poor, but you may not have known you per se were poor. The boys credit life at Butler Place and their mother for instilling strength of character despite their modest upbringing. I used to sit at a table uh, when we got ready to eat, and uh, I didn't only feed them food. I would uh, uh, give them, a, I would lecture them and, ad and advise, give them a lot of advice mm -hmm. and while they was chewing. <laughs> <laughs> They had something to chew on. A lot of times, mom would have me, I guess, busy, you know, like she made me join the you know, YMCA, and so that kept me busy. So during our time, we had a whole lot of community involvement with each other, and, and, and that kept us going, and it, and it created opportunities for us to work. I even had a little detail during the summer months of cutting grass and painting uh, the old folks' uh, structures on the inside. We had to paint every two years. So I had a ground crew and I had a paint crew. And so we worked and it made a difference because we were always busy working, doing something for Miss Rosie or Miss Jones and that sort of thing. I was able to have uh, a nice little wardrobe because I had saved up all the money, you know, during the summer months. We were chumps with changes, they say, and it helped us when we were able to go back to school. Yeah, you had people on welfare, but we fared well because we worked. And it created a work ethics for us. And uh, some of us still working like myself, but it, it, if you were here, that's what you did. You worked. 
and nothing per se was given to you. You had to earn it. During the Great Depression, thousands of Fort Worth families made less than $1,000 a year. They lived in substandard houses, shacks really, throughout the city. So when Butler Place opened in 1940, it was a godsend for many of the city's poorest residents. The Fort Worth Housing Authority, as it was known then, decided to build Butler Place on Chambers Hill, close to what was then called the Colored High School, just east of downtown. At the time, it was the city's only public high school for African-American students. Butler Place was named for Henry H. Butler, a Civil War veteran and the first African-American teacher in the Fort Worth school system. As the need for public housing grew, Butler Place expanded in the 1960s and upgraded the original units. Surrounded by three major highways, the complex was physically isolated from many basic social services and retail. So, with the help of community partners, the Housing Authority brought in a top-notch child care center, youth activities, and a library. Butler children attended segregated schools, what later became G.W. Carver Elementary and I.M. Terrell High School. But, D. Jennings says it was hardly a second-rate education. My teachers are here with great teachers. A lot of those teachers were graduates with a lot of various degrees, but at that time, because of segregation, they were not able to go to other places. So we had some of the best teachers here. When I was coming up, I didn't have to deal with a lot of drugs. I just didn't. The generations after me did have to deal with some of that, and it created more of a poverty trap over here. Also, over time, it became increasingly difficult to maintain the aging Butler property. To add central air conditioning, upgrade appliances, much less provide modern internet connections, would be difficult and costly. Butler Place needs to close because it's not up to modern day living standards. Concrete floors and walls aren't what we want for our families. Over the years, the way that we administer public housing has changed. We know that concentrating families in one area is not good for anyone. We really want them to have access to green space, grocery stores, parks, great schools, jobs, and transportation. I'm an advocate of decentralization of poverty. Here at Butler, you got 300 or 400 apartments, and I don't know how many people live here, but my point is that you got all poverty impacted people living together. When you spread them out and they see things differently, they will act differently, most of them will, and have better opportunities. Beginning in 2017, Fort Worth Housing Solutions began helping residents prepare to move out of Butler, giving them a choice of numerous new affordable apartments located throughout the city. HUD's Rental Assistance Demonstration Project, called RAD for short, made this possible. The Jennings brothers moved out of Butler long ago and tried for years to get their mother to move too. With news that Butler Place would be closing, she finally agreed and chose an affordable hillside apartment. She's gonna be in a comfortable property that's near town in an area that we grew up in before we moved actually to Butler. And so uh, she's from what we call the bottom area of Fort Worth and she's a Fort Worth lady and she, I mean, she's been here all her life and she's gonna be in an area that she's very familiar with. For mother, it's becoming a full circle, you know. She's going back to where it all started. Well, I like it's nice and, and the rooms are nice. And I think I'm closer to the grocery stores. You know, the liquor stores, they are very, very nice. They don't dirty the bottom of your skillets when you cook, because I love to cook. D. Jennings believes other Butler residents will be just as happy in their new homes. I think once they get acclimated to the new environments with the new housing that I've seen across this city that's been provided for them, they're going to say, ooh we, thank you Jesus. That's what they're going to say. And, and, and that new housing, we're going to bring them some new opportunities, give them a fresh start. Uh, it's, it's just going to be better. Fort Worth Housing Solutions has worked really hard for the last 20 years to deconcentrate public housing. We now have properties in every corner of the city. We give our residents the power to choose where they want to live, where they can be successful. City leaders are talking with the community about future plans for the 42-acre Butler Place campus. The original Carver Elementary School building, where housing authority offices are located, will remain, and possibly others. But most everything else will come down. It's time, it's due, it, it served its purpose.